Oh shit. I side I side parted my hair today. We're not We're not supposed to be doing that anymore. Is it Is this right? Is this how I do this? I don't <sighs> I'm so old. <sighs> My hair has nothing whatsoever to do with the uh, pour or the bar or anything else. It's just I'm still big mad that the TikTokers decided I can't side part my hair or wear skinny jeans anymore because millennials are apparently ancient. Cool. I'm going to tell you all about the soap that we are doing in just a minute. But before I do, hello, I am Mrs. Soap and Clay. Let's make stuff. How's it going, Sudzers? Welcome back to the channel. You are at Soap and Clay, where we make all the soapy things, and you are here for day 335 of 365 days of soap. Crazy. And it is the Soap Prentice's turn at the Ultra Thin Lines Horizontal Amy Warden Soap Challenge Challenge thing. Lots of words, not a breath. It's what I do. Yes, so as I said yesterday, I loved this pour because you got to manipulate soap batter in ways that you're not supposed to manipulate soap batter. And I was totally here for this. So I was very excited to see, you know, what Georgia May do it and what her take on the whole thing was. And so that's literally what we're doing today. So I'm gonna stop talking here and we're gonna go to the video and we can talk about Georgia May's pour and whether or not she liked it. Okay, day 335, the horizontal ultra thin lines challenge part de. And uh, the Soap Prentice is having her turn at it, so that's awesome. Now she is using the exact same scent blend as well as the same oil blend that I used yesterday. So we like to keep everything consistent from my batch to hers, so we can look at the different pores and the techniques and, you know, all of the things. Yes. Now, this soap, or this uh, scent blend rather, it will discolor. And we knew it was going to discolor going in because of the vanillin content, so you know, good job Maple Street for putting that on the thing. I appreciate you completely. And I actually built my design with the intention of it discoloring, like knowing it was going to do so and wanting to see, you know, just how much it did. And we saw that. So that was cool. Now the Kaylin clay has been dispersed in water is going into the batch here. Now remember yesterday, uh, one of the, I mean, the biggest thing that you want with this and with like so many other soap challenges is you want a very fluid batter to, you know, do the pouring and then do all this awesome skewering, which I freaking loved. I loved everything about just getting to move that batter around over and over and over again. Um, because we so rarely as soap makers really do that. And so I, I loved that. I found that incredibly cathartic and amazing for sure. Like this is actually a pour that I think I would do again, a lot really. And so there's that for sure. Now it looks like Georgia May is working with three different colors here. So she's splitting everything basically equal, which is super awesome. And then, you know, she'll do the pourry pour thing and the skewer skewer thing and all of the things. Yes. And I like her color palette. Looks like yellow, light green, and dark green, but it's going to discolor. So, and she knows it's going to discolor. She saw my bars, and also she saw the, you know, the fragrance from Maple Street that says it's going to discolor, really, because of the, the vanillin content, and she's been doing this for a very long time. So, 
I'm curious to see what her bars end up looking like after the cut and after some air gets to all of them and just how dark it goes. The scent blend itself is delightful. This is a really lovely scent and one of the reasons that I got this is because I am on a Facebook page uh, like Scent Sluts and Hoes um, that's primarily candle makers really but they are always you know chit chatting top best scents all of the jazz and their thing is always always like two really big ones like cashmere or cashmere glow or whatever and so I'm like okay I'll cocoa butter cashmere whatever and so that was why I ordered two of the ones that I did for Maple Street you know this for this month's challenge because I wanted to play with them and I wanted to see what they actually smelled like and yeah they're super yummy I really do like this scent blend specifically a lot and it was just a delight to work with so I get why it's a fave among the candle makers for sure and what is she doing <laughs> oh okay the Soprentis is going to squeeze bottle this you guys that's a that's a thing I'm was this a tutorial so often within the Amy Warden soap challenge things you have like multiple tutorials that are given and so sometimes it's like well this is the beginner one or this is the advanced one or this is an alternate way to do it one and that's awesome I don't remember there being a tutorial for this ultra thin lines you know thing involving squeeze bottles and so that's interesting I mean the assumption is there was a tutorial for that because why would the Soprentis go off half cocked on a soap challenge when like the whole point of it is to you know actually do the challenge the way that we're told to do the challenge as opposed to how we already know how to make things work and so that's like part of the challenge in and of itself is like forcing us to use someone else's technique instead of the ones that we've developed so I'm going to assume this is one of the options but I am now very intrigued so let's go check out her pour and see what she does with these squeeze bottles Wow, look how she has her mold set up, you guys. This is a... Uh... Huh. Okay. Okay, so she's going to use the skewer there to keep her pour steady and in the exact same place. So she knows exactly where the soap batter is going to go. And she's putting down a reasonably large amount of her yellow and now I'm curious to see if she times everything else the same way or if she kind of mixes it up with the amount that she lays down and it's looking like she's basically doing the same amount for the second color as well okay 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 sure and let's see what she does with the lighter green she's basically the same amount of that one as well okay interesting this is all very interesting for sure and again I don't remember there being this tutorial and again again I assumed that it was there and I just didn't watch this particular one and went with the first one that you know was on the page or whatever but this is interesting now this skewer that's it's actually a good idea that's a good idea for a number of reasons um, you could also use a, a skewer like this positioned over the top of like a regular loaf mold if you're trying to get really straight lines in something like a teardrop pour or the hidden feather pour because it gives you like a stabilization and something to run your squeeze bottle against to keep the lines nice and straight like so there's like a, a big benefit for that just across the board I like that and it's really cool watching the the lines go in like this this is this would also be another way to do a really cool wood grain honestly like this is another technique for wood grain and I, I talked about it yesterday too with the with my ultra thin lines that's another I mean this the, the thin lines version that I did yesterday also a great way to do you could totally use that for a nice wood grain for sure it's a good technique it totally works but this this would too and that's one of the things I love about wood grain it's always really thin batter fluid pores 
thin lines, pores, and there's so many ways to get a, an awesome wood grain. And that was actually one of the tutorials that we did not select for the soap challenge because from Amy Warden's back catalog because I've done so many wood grains, like just in my life, but also within the channel. I think that I've shown you guys like at least four but I think maybe closer to eight because I love thin lines pours, I love wood grain soaps, and I love playing with the different techniques and the designs at all times. Um, this is one way that I've never actually made a wood grain, so now I low-key want to go pour another wood grain, really, and use this because, yeah, this could be, this could be really cool. Now, she's continuing to wiggle this around to continue to move that batter out because the whole idea if you're going to be doing something like this it's kind of similar to like a, a faux funnel type pour when you're you know layering the colors on top of each other and you want it to spread out the layer underneath but it's not quite moving the way that you know it really should be to fill the mold and you can see with that green there her soap batter is thickening up now that can be from a number of, of things, right? I think my soap batter got a little thick yesterday. Do you remember that? Do you remember if it got thick? I don't remember. Yesterday seems like a million years ago. It's just, that's just life at this point. I, I accomplish a day and then that day has been forgotten, really. So I don't remember if my soap batter got thick or not. So it could be the scent. It could also be an issue of um, over mixing and that's one of the things that like you always that's one of the hardest things of being a soap maker is a not being afraid of your batter like don't be afraid of your batter stop being afraid to do things because no matter what at the end of the day as long as you've hit it hit an, emuls uh, an emulsion it becomes soap no matter what you do to it no matter what it looks like so a don't ever be afraid of your batter. But two, learn to spot emulsion. And that is one of the things that honestly, I mean, I show you emulsion all the time and what that looks like as I am pouring soaps. And you know, I pull up the stick and like, see that? Not emulsified. Here's how you can do. And then here's your emulsion, whatever. Um, one of the biggest things that soap makers do I'm not to say wrong because again it's all just soap it's all just fun so you're not doing it wrong but you know that if you're wanting really really thin batter the, the, the tendency to over mix is definitely there and I get that completely so and it really that something like that really does just come with making a crap ton of soap or just being brave enough to just stop at a point and go well I don't feel exactly right with how long I've been mixing this but it's good enough right and then just you know testing that make your soap and see what happens and if it falls out of solution or you see light heavy pockets or whatever well no then maybe you need to mix a little bit further but emulsion is one of those things that once you've made enough soap you can totally find it very easily and it makes your entire life easier if you're focusing on just getting to an emulsion and then working it from there to whatever consistency you need. I, I would say that that is wildly more important in soap making than this idea of trace because uh, trace is a very arbitrary thing. I mean so much of soap making is arbitrary like it's whatever but trace doesn't like you know when trace gets described it's like uh, light trace is pancake batter. My pancake batter is thick as shit. Like, that's how I make my pancakes. And they're delightful, for the record. So, like, every time I read that, I'm like, wait, pancake batter is supposed to be thin? Because mine isn't, and my pancakes are, are, like, amazing. They're fire. There's all of the good things in the world. So, I, you know, so that confuses me right off the bat. But then, like, other things, like brownie batter is thick trace well I mean I understand that because I've never actually made brownie batter thin I don't think that's actually possible with the amount whatever all of the things anyway my point is trace is 
not something that you should really gauge your soap making off of. It's more important that you learn what an emulsion is and then you move on from there. And I am loving, speaking of moving on from whatever, I'm loving how these lines have continued to move throughout this process. And I'm just, this is gorgeous, like super pretty. And I'm actually kind of bummed because I know this is going to discolor. I know it's going to discolor because mine discolored. I knew mine was going to discolor because of the vanillin content that was listed. And so, yeah, all of that. But as her soap batter is getting thicker, it's still not making the design like, you know, weird or bad or whatever. I am fascinated to see this whole process though and see if she does take uh, a skewer to this anyway. Because the, the, the design that I did, the technique that I did from the video was again, I just put some stripes down and then work those stripes into the solid colors by skewering the opposite way of the stripes, right? Just really, really tight skewers over and over and over again. And then like the secondary thing was you can also sort of space it out and like you know where your cuts are gonna be so you can make that line too and then do some swirls within the individual bars, which I kind of messed around with, but you know, not a lot. So whatever and Oh, she's going to also do this. Okay, so she's also skewering it. Now, she's not skewering it nearly as close as I did, like, at all, because I would do, like, three or four turns just in a little tiny, like, half of a, an inch area before I would start moving on. So, oh, and I guess she sort of stopped at some point, too. Okay, this is all fascinating. Cool. Let's, uh, Let's go to the cut and check this out. This will get put in the oven for C-pop and gel and she just spritzed it with alcohol so we don't get soda ash. Okay, and on to the cut. And I actually let this one set for a couple days because I wanted to see what the discoloration would ultimately do um, before we cut it, see where it was kind of going. And yeah, it's going dark, but look at that. That looks like a gorgeous slab of wood, doesn't it? Like that's just, delightful that's those are you know my kitchen countertops that's just I mean that's gorgeous I, I love that for sure and the little blue greeny veins that are still there they will not stay there this is all going to discolor and it's ultimately going to discolor into various colors of brown really with everything but it's again it's nice for a wood grain like for sure um, and so you can see the difference between the inside of the bar and the top. Now the top's been exposed to air, so it's starting to do its discoloration thing, and obviously the inside is not. But now that it is exposed to air, the inside will also continue to discolor uh, pretty significantly, really. But if it doesn't, uh, it's kind of cool, because you have these cool brown like top and bottoms, and then this like interesting yellow-green in the inside. That's amazing. I love that for sure. But yeah, no, this is a, oh yeah, these bars, these four right here, that's definitely going to be some epic wood graining. I, I like that a lot. I don't know if we would really necessarily call this an ultra thin lines though. What do you think? It's a beautiful wood grain, which again can be used, the, the ultra thin lines can also be used to make a wood grain I think because I mean literally she just did it so I think it's I think they're pretty gorgeous like I can get behind that and then the thin lines totally exist throughout the inside of the bar as well as on the top you can see the swirls or the lines that's very very cute it's a very lovely bar of soap like for sure I I love that and it, the bar is still a little bit soft, which is interesting because it's, you know, three-ish days after the pour for this one. But obviously she hid an emulsion. She has nice soap. It's a, it was a well-formed, you know, oil recipe because I did it and uh, I, I, I'm good at that thing. So yes, but yeah, no, they're really cool bars of soap. I love them. The scent is awesome. The discoloration will continue to just really up all of the awesome different colors of brown and make it look more like a wood grain throughout all of this. And 
I'm a sucker for wood grain. So for me, that's an absolute win across the board. And that is day 335, the Soprentices take on the Thin Lines so as far challenge. as the scent blends go, so far so good. We, both of our scents, we knew, or both of our soaps, we knew they were going to discolor with this scent. We expected that going in. And the scent after, you know, spawnification, it's very strong, it's very delightful. I love it, for sure. The discoloration, again, we expected. And her soap, actually looks more like a uh, wood grain than even my soap does. So as I said yesterday, the ultra thin lines, you can definitely use this for sure uh, to do a wood grain soap. Just file that away in your soapy repertoire. For those of you who don't even make soap and you're just here to watch the making of the soap, that could be a wood grain. So if you like the soap, you can uh, totally pick it up at soapandclay.com, mine or Georgia's, they're there today, I promise. I have my shit together for March. Unlike February, but February's challenges made me not want to do anything. So yeah, you didn't really get many uh, February bars until literally at the end, but it was a crazy sale. So that was fun too. Anyway, these ones are up there right now. So you can totally grab them right now. If you're interested in seeing what other challenges we do and the rest of the scent tests from Maple Street that we will be doing for the rest of the month, subscribe to the channel, do the thing. That would be fabulous. For those of you who have subscribed to the channel, hey, you're fabulous. Thank you. Really, thank you for joining me for another round of 365 days of soap. I'm out of here for today. I'll see you guys all again tomorrow for another round of soapy fun. Bye.